Bitcoin, this video up to close trade Wednesday, 27th of March, 2013. Hope you had a good day's training today. Well, in my mind, the question is this. We've got severe weakness in Europe. The repercussions of what they've done to Cyprus is being felt in uh, the financial sector in the European equities. General European equities are weak. The banks are particularly weak, particularly in the peripheral countries. And question is, can the U.S. equity market continue to rally while we have equity weakness in Europe? Usually the equities markets around the world kind of move together, obviously with kind of different strengths and speeds. But if we continue to see real equity weakness, and we've definitely seen that in the periphery countries uh, in Europe, can you know, can the U.S. continue to make kind of new highs given that background weakness? I, I don't know. We've got some real problems in terms of average trade size and low volumes at these highs. Uh, but it looks like we're kind of wanting to push back into the 60s. Um, set off to Monday's sell-off, the uh, shorts had run out of bullets, and that's exactly what happened. And we kind of rallied into the 60s. We had a sell-off overnight uh, into uh, today's open Wednesday, and the professionals picked it up at the lows and drove it back right back up. So, you know, we're closing right under that 60 level, 1.2 million contracts traded. In terms of better X trend, this volume based tra trailing stop, you can see, you know, we're still in an uptrend here. We've been playing around with the support level here. It's held and we're kind of itching to break up. And in better trend line, you can see a consolidation area here. We get large moves that kind of come out of consolidation moves here. We've been in this zone for a while. We've pushed above it a couple of times with these red bars breaking above uh, that kind of descending uh, trend line, marking the top of that zone. And we kind of look like we're itching to break out. But you know, does it end up being exhaustion buying? We kind of close back. We're right at the apex here. So you know, we're running out of time. So you know, do we have a spike up and then it collapses back down? Or does it kind of spike into those 60s and just kind of keep going? Um, in terms of uh, trend oscillators, nice little cluster of buy signals gone off here. You know, we're coming up to the zero line. We take profits when we kind of uh, turn down above the zero line on these. So we got you know a couple of days at least to run on these before we take profits on those. Hopefully we will, and that'll be a you know another new equity high on the trend systems. But this is what's kind of got <coughs> getting me a little bit concerned. I didn't not pulling up the average trade size uh, chart today, keep that one to myself, but if you look at all the indices lately, certainly the last four or five days, the average trade size has collapsed, absolutely collapsed, having been very high coming into these highs. Uh, and then you can see it in terms of the um, uh, amateur patterns. So NASDAQ here, we've got end of trend, bearish divergence kind of come in. We've got these amateur bars here on NASDAQ. Russell, no volume data on Russell, but we got our pullback to end of trend, remember, here. Uh, this is S&P 500. There we go. Um, average, low average trade size, amateur activity at these kind of highs here after exhaustion buying, pullback to end of trend. Um, Dow, we haven't had pullback to end of trend here, but the same couple of uh, kind of amateur bars happening at these highs. So for me, that's kind of, you know, something to consider. So I'm not totally wedded to, you know, continuation of a, you know, this market kind of breaking up. Let, let's see. Um, in terms of the equity, uh, you know, flows of capital around the world, this is this is it. So, you know, the um, currencies all went in the right way. I've been talking about this for a long time now. We've had all our basing pattern in the dollar index. You can see all these exhaustion buying, flush patterns, bearish divergences, bang, we've taken off. We're in an uptrend on the dollar index, okay? And then the last couple of days, a little bit of weakness, and then bang, busted through to kind of new highs today. We're in an uptrend here. And then all the other currencies are starting to weak. So we're coming up to cyclical turns. Canadian dollar, it's come back up here at 98. We've got that to play in. You know, the commodity currencies, Canadian dollar and Aussie dollar, have been the strongest. Again, been talking about this. This is going to roll at some point. We've got Aussie dollar uh, weakened today. It overshot this little resistance, but, you know, kind of back at the 104s, people underneath this kind of previous high, you know, taking a little bit of profits, kind of coming back down. Pound, we got this to play out soon. We got that blue professional bar. We break the low of that blue professional bar. Shows that was professionals, you know, selling into that rally. We've got this cyclical turn to kind of come in. And Euro, here we go. I mean, the last couple of days, the news out of Cyprus was horrible. We had this huge reversal day. Back down again. We're in a downtrend. 
Um, so Japanese yen still in a downtrend, you know, very weak little bounce here. This will come in, this pullback and a downtrend cyclical resistance will kind of come in. This will kind of keep on going down. So the money is coming. In. We've got capital flight out of Europe, out of Japan, out of the UK, into the US. And today, confirmation what they're doing. They're buying bonds. So again, uh, we had this kind of fake out pattern here, amateurs right down at the lows, exhaustion selling, and today we got a break above cyclical resistance. So we're in an uptrend now on the daily chart on bonds. We've done the hard work in terms of you know exhaustion selling, blue professional bars kind of down here at the lows. Uh, we're back at the top of this kind of range. We did, you know, we overshot it on the downside here, and I was wondering, you know, is this going to hold? But now with that, we're breaking above uh, cyclical resistance on the daily chart. We're into an uptrend. So. You know, um, times of stress, people go into safe assets, and U.S. dollar and U.S. bonds is where it is right now. Um, so, you know, some of that money is flowing into equities, but it's pretty weak at these highs. Um, and if we get equity sell-offs in Europe, you know, can the U.S. equity market, you know, continue to rally? Um, 40,500 tip bar chart. Again, this was, you know, Monday's activity ran out of bullets. The sellers ran out of bullets. And here we go. We're back up at this kind of top of this range, 60s. So support resistance, I mean, they're still printing and not being broken. So I've said, you know, it's trend moves, then cyclical activity. Um, and again, this is an extended kind of cyclical activity uh, type area. We've not seen a break yet. You know, putting in some kind of bullish divergence type here in terms of the sell-off today was weak. Um, and 13,500 chart. Again, that was Monday's activity. It was all amateurs down here with these amateur down bars here during the day. And that's just showing the amateurs want this market to go down. Uh, today's activity, we're you know above resistance here. Blue freshman bar at the end of the day is not unusual. Um, you know, we've not... Uh, come out with exhaustion buying at the highs at 60 and then we're sitting we're sitting at that 60 level so again I just reiterate you know if we have equity weakness uh, driven by you know the financial services sector in Europe can the uh, US equity market continue to rally it bonds definitely can but not sure about equities we'll have to wait and see and then lastly 1500 tip bar chart for the day trading we had a doozy of a setup beautiful so yesterday's finished up with pullback to end of trend Exhaustion buying, bearish divergence, and overnight we sell off. Big sell off from the 60s down at the 46s. And pull back to end of trend, we just break it a little bit, and all those blue professional bars kind of step in, pro signal exit. The professionals anxious to uh, buy it up at these lows. Now, uh, nice little setup in terms of bullish divergence and then a flush pattern here. So, cyclical turn, um, big pun. End of trend with exhaustion buying, wait to the second cyclical turn after end of trend. You know, make sure we've got divergence going in there. We're flushing out the last of those sellers. Look at all these blue professional bars kind of coming in. So the first time they came in here, three or four of them on the 1500 tip bar chart, and then another three of them coming in at this test down at 47. And then second cyclical turn after end of trend, holds and bingo. Beautiful little rally. Now, my problem with trading today was I was... Uh, uh, expecting a continuation of the sell-off uh, just because we hadn't seen the bearish divergence kind of come in. So initially I was getting short, short at 47.50, lost a point uh, kind of trying to get short here, but these amateur down bars just refused to go. So I had to get out with a point lost there. And then I got in on these uh, on that little test uh, kind of down, uh, trying to go long again a little bit too early. Long at a break, it was I think it was a break on the 500 tip bar chart, 49.25, and took a one and a half point loss uh, as this was kind of coming back down. But then as soon as this cluster came in, the blue professional bars, second cyclical turn, bang. Uh, got long at 48 uh, and a quarter and took uh, three points out of this move. Got out too early here, uh, re-entered uh, when we saw that blue professional bar kind of come in and took out another two and a half points on the way back up here to 54s. So it was a nice bottom, you know, signaled by pullback to end of trend. Then we're waiting for uh, the volume kind of confirmation testing down and then the professionals are sure this is going to hold bang and we're away to a, to a rally so the for me takeaway lessons is changes of trend are always tricky to trade you always get these kind of you know bits of uh, just kind of confused activity it's kind of testing testing kind of making sure we're driving out the last of on this you know uh, kind of down move the last of the sellers um, and then so we got you get kind of volatility. You can't. I got in too early. I 
I was too late to pick up anything on the downside. That low had been made effectively with that pro signal exit, so there wasn't much to be made on the downside. And then I just got in too early on the upside here. So you know, it's kind of tricky trading, but eventually got in with the right trend direction and then uh, made my money uh, on this move up. So I was kind of happy with that. It was a, a nice little signal here. So there we go. Um, I'll tag that on. Uh, I hope your trading is kind of going well. With the Cypress stuff, you know, this is the world that we live in. I wish it were different. I wish, you know, depositors hadn't been whacked. Uh, I wish the smart money and the connected people hadn't, you know, been able to get their money out kind of early because it means, you know, the little guy gets whacked even harder. Uh, but this is the world we live in. So, you know, I'm not going to cry over spilt milk and say I wish it were different. It's, this is the world we live in. So it's like, you know, for me, I'm trying to figure out, okay, what does that mean? I mean, I, I do. It's like I don't have any European uh, bank accounts. I'm look, checking to make sure that the the accounts that I have are in safe jurisdictions and safe banks. Um, suggest you do the same. You know, just uh, this is the world we live in. Anyway, hope your trading's going well. Got long 48 and a quarter. Long 48 and a quarter. Okay, let's try this again. Um, a whole bunch of blue professional bars kind of coming on this retrace. So we've had our pullback to end of trend exhaustion buying. If the exhaustion happens on the end of trend, usually best to wait for a second cyclical turn. I was trying to get in too early the last time. This time, second cyclical turn after end of trend. Here we go. Coming up to 49s. whole bunch of blue professional bars. We had a flush pattern, flushing out the last of the sellers. On the 500, really weak selling, all this bullish divergence. Coming in, very weak selling. No, it's Rambo patterns here, but you know, we're just trying to find our way. In this zone, these are holding, so hopefully we'll get back up through top of this resistance at 50. So just long 48.25. We go, got the break, a little blue. Oh, excellent. Okay, I'm just going to move my target out to 53.25. Um, got a little bit to make up on those first two trades. A little bit of professional bars, almost like a little bit of a gathering, kind of under the resistance previous uh, high at 50. And then we got the run, running a few stops there. That's why it got really quick. So, hopefully, we're on our way now into a change in trend. So, we've got to see this resolve, pull back to end of trend. See if I can eke a little bit more out. Then the 53, okay, to 51s. Little amateur down bar here, amateur down bars on 500. Resistance coming on 15, bit of break above that, take us in trend move here. And it'll be resistance as well on 45 when this goes off. Um, so we're in uptrend, and uh, I haven't seen exhaustion buying on 1500 yet to end this. So let's keep going. Just sitting and waiting for the next kind of break above resistance here on 500, so still in an uptrend. Not seeing blue professional bars taking profits or exhaustion buying. So waiting and waiting. The original target's 252.25, kind of up here. But I've stretched it out to 325 here, so let's see. Here we go, having another go at it. Come through. And here we go, initial target 225, 52.25 just been hit. Some thousand on better momentum here, but okay, here we go. Here we go. 53 is my target. Uh, this one down here was about 13, so we need a similar thing. We're not seeing blue professional bars up here, not seeing our pullback to end of trend, but we could just be pushed out on a little bit of a rush up to three and a quarters. Come on, all right, just moving my target out to 53.75, just for another half point, hopefully, on the upside, and that will um, do me. The reason for doing that is we've not seen blue professional bars, not seen exhaustion buying, not seen pullback to end of trend. So I think we're going to get through uh, up through threes and just, just hopefully just get out on a little bit of a spike. So 53.75 Smith target. We're up at uh, 53s here. Temporarily got rejected, but um, blue professional bars stepped in on this little retrace. We've not seen the blue professional bars at the highs. Here we go, come on, 375 is what I want. Let's go for another little push up. 
Alright, pull back and an uptrend's gone off. Uh, we had the first blue professional bar here on 1500 in a long time since this breakout. So, but I'm just looking for this. You know, just moved to three and a half. I mean, funnily enough, this is two and a quarter where the original target was. So, come on. And we haven't had an exhaustion buying pattern. Uh, the last exhaustion buying was here. Come on, we need to get a decent reading on 1500. We're still in an uptrend, no question. We're above resistance on these two time frames, so the sale's got to run. So let's see where pullback to end of trend kind of takes us. Through 53s should run a few stops, and I'm just looking for a little bit more. So come on. 125, damn it. <laughs> That's what happens when you push your target out. <laughs> so just for three. See if there's a re entry, uh, but not happy with that.